Hi, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming Life. Repairing and maintaining fences. It's a never ending job. In fact, you could go check fence every day and find something that needs attention. A fence with a strand that's coming loose, pop staples, or even fence posts that are pulling out of the ground. If you aren't careful, fences can take up your entire life. And when you have a ton of fence, it's like you become a fencing technician instead of a rancher. Fences are very important for obvious reasons, and the main reason is to keep the herd where they're supposed to be. Here in the last few days, we've moved the cows to summer pasture, a couple thousand acres that'll be their home until October. Usually, we try to check fence in a pasture before we move the cows, but with haying in the beginning of farmer's market, I'm a little bit behind. So today, we head down and inspect the summer pasture fence. First, we gather our supplies. Fencing isn't horribly complicated and most everything we need will fit in this blue tote, which we'll take with us on the Gator, our 4x4 utility vehicle. First thing in the bin is our Jake's wire tighteners. We'll talk more about these, but these little tools have saved me a lot of time and a lot of frustration. We also bring T-post clips to attach barbed wire to our metal posts and a bunch of staples to attach it to our wooden posts a hammer, Jake's wire tightener tool, and of course, fencing pliers. I'll also throw in a couple bottles of water. Always important to stay hydrated. Our toolbox goes in the back of the gator, along with some smooth wire for repairing fence. We use smooth wire for patching rather than barbed wire because it's a little easier to work with and it won't bite you like barbed wire will. Also coming with us on this trip to the back few thousand acres is the drone for those wonderful aerial shots y'all like so much. I almost forgot. Another tool we will definitely need is a flathead screwdriver for twisting the T-post clips. Before we hit the road and drive the few miles to summer pasture, a little fuel is needed. I'll top off the gas in the Gator because there's nothing worse or more embarrassing than running out of gas. The fuel tank on the Gator is actually right underneath the driver's seat, and we have our own fuel tanks on the ranch, so it's just a matter of filling it up. No full service here, unless I can teach the Peacock to pump gas. Finally, with all our tools and supplies in the back and a full tank of fuel, we can hit the road and drive and drive. You know, while we're driving, I can tell you about a mistake I made this week. I sat down with Google Earth on the computer and actually figured out how much fence we have on the ranch. I measured every single fence line, jotted down the distances, and then added it all up. I should know better than to question these things. I should just sit back and say, yep, we have a lot of fence to maintain. But instead, I get these urges to know exactly how much there is and how much work is involved and how many hours go into maintaining fence. All the fences added up equal to a little over 26 miles of barbed wire fence. And when you check fence, you don't drive terribly fast. So to check all the fence, you have probably 13 or 14 hours of just driving. Add in the time it takes to fix fence and you have a few days of just fence but that's why we split it up. I like to check fence in a pasture before I put cows in there, making sure there's no weak points, and then check the fence every couple weeks while they're in that pasture. If we have neighboring cows, that can cause more problems that might require more frequent checking of the fence. If their cows are in heat, our bulls can decide to take out a fence in a minute just to get to some new girlfriends. Finally, we arrive at our summer pasture a few thousand acres that the cows can range over all summer long. Lots of grass for them to eat and lots of fence for them to test. Checking fence is pretty straightforward. Drive along the fence slowly and look for anything that doesn't look right. 
I like to drive in a clockwise rotation so the driver's side is always towards the fence. We drive along, looking at the fence, looking for any staples that might have popped, or T-post clips that might have fallen off, or broken strands like these. Fixing a broken strand is easy. You twist a loop into each end of the broken strand and do the same with the new wire in between the brake. Once the wire is put back together, it's still pretty loose. But using our Jake's wire tighteners, we twist the wire until it's tight again. The strand breaking has also caused the T-post clip to pop off the post, so we're going to fix that too. Using the screwdriver, we twist a new clip onto the post, holding the wire secure. Then it's off down the fence again to the next issue, which sometimes isn't that far away. Here, the bottom strand of wire has come undone from the post. It's just a matter of replacing another T-post clip. Damage to the bottom strand of wire is pretty common, but also problematic because calves could lie down next to the fence and then easily roll underneath the fence, finding themselves separated from their moms and the rest of the herd. That, in turn, will cause a mom to get upset and possibly do more damage to the fence. So what causes these regular breaks of the bottom wire of the fence? One animal is the culprit out here, the antelope. Officially, they are pronghorn antelope, and in some ways, they are the bane of my fencing existence. Antelope don't jump fences like a deer will do. They go underneath, and that causes all kinds of damage to the fence. From twisting bottom wires to even causing breaks on middle wires when they bend the wires up from going underneath. Just like we see here. In addition, you can actually see the path that they use to cross underneath the fence. So, this fence needs fixed as well. Again, we twist the wires into loops, adding a new piece in between, and finishing up with another Jake's wire tightener. Then, a few new staples into this old post. That's one thing that always strikes me every time I check fence. Some of these fence posts have been here for almost a hundred years, put in the ground by original homesteaders, and here they are, still in use, carrying on, holding up fence for generations and generations to come. And that's how my day goes, driving between little projects, finding breaks or loose spots in the fence, stopping, getting out, fixing them, over and over. A tedious job, but one that's another step towards having a successful and productive ranch. Without fences, we don't have cows, and without cows, no ranch. So I drive fencing my life away. Looking on all this old fence all day <laughs> really gets me thinking. How many years ago were some of these old posts set in the ground? How many generations of ranchers have ridden horses or driven ATVs or even walked along these fences checking them out? Lots of the posts, just like this one, are just old tree branches set in the ground before milling was even around to make them smooth and symmetrical. You know, for that matter, where do these posts even come from? You might not have noticed, but we don't have a whole lot of trees around here. Maybe they turned them all into fence posts. The sad truth is that the American family ranch is a dying breed, literally. Ranches are hard to move from one generation to the next, and a lot of ranches are being split up between siblings when a parent passes away. Inevitably, someone comes along and buys out smaller family ranches and incorporates them into larger and larger conglomerates. And that's the end of the family ranch. Our hope is that someday this ranch will be passed along to our kids. And our kids are gonna check these fences. It's a dream that all of us wanna see come true. This channel, hopefully, someday, will help that happen. And I wanna thank you for being a part of it with us. Check us out on Facebook. Make sure you don't miss, miss anything happening around here. And trust me, there's some pretty cool things coming up. Subscribe as well. And if you have a question or a comment, feel free to leave it for us. We love hearing from you guys. And we've made some really cool friends that way. Aaron is becoming the queen of Instagram. So check us out there as well. Thanks for being here. Have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Mm -hmm.